In this lesson, we're gonna learn one of my all-time favorite acoustic blues intros. Let's get to it. John here and this is your Tuesday Blues where every single week we come together and I'll share a lesson that'll help you play better blues. That's what it's all about and today we're going to do that by having a look at an amazing piece of music by one of my favorite artists, Keb Mo. And this is coming from his tune, Perpetual Blues Machine. This is an amazing acoustic blues piece. If you're into that sort of thing, you should definitely check this out if you haven't already. He's a master. This is a stripped down vocal and guitar tune, and I absolutely love it. Let's get into the intro. All right, we come in with a cool intro lick on beat two. So we count one, two triplet. That two triplet, I'm sliding into this little shape here, coming from an A major triad, really. And we're gonna focus on strings three, two, and one, right? I've got the C sharp, I've got the E, and then the open first string for another E. All right, and we're going to slide in, like I said, on beat two. So one, two, triplet. And just pick through those strings with that triplet rhythm. Then we're going to back down. So I really want you to play it with this fingering because we're going to back down, and make it easier on ourselves by targeting the next note, B, on the third string, fourth fret, with the ring finger, and then down to A. So we kind of land with that index finger right in position, really strong spot for it. And then the last two notes are the F sharp on the fourth string and then the open six for the open E. So one, two, triplet, three, and four, and. Really slick way to get us into this tune. And really here at the uh, second measure, we're gonna kick off the main theme, the main sort of recurring um, you know, theme that you're gonna hear in this. And we're wanting to get into this D7 shape or picking off the pinky, you can have a, a D9 sound with this F sharp in the bass, really cool. And you can play this a couple of ways. I'll play it this way uh, generally, but you can also play this like this moving the thumb over and playing that in the bass. So if that's your go-to for D7, which is a great way to play a D7, I usually do, um, then absolutely play it this way. But I'm gonna shift to this, since I know there are a lot of people that struggle with that thumb and haven't quite gotten there yet. But um, this would be the chord form, um, or at least another way, an optional way of playing it without the thumb here. But this is where we're going. And what we're gonna do is pinch with the bass. The bass is going to be steady on this F sharp with the thumb, okay? And we're going to pinch third string, then we're going to pinch with the second string, but I'm going to put that pinky down and play the D on the second string. Then on the and of two, come back to the third string. Then for beat three, I'm going to pick up and play the bass right along with the C on the second string before this cool little part to get us out. I'm gonna pick with these two fingers simultaneously, that's index and middle, on strings four and three, under the chord. The chord hasn't moved, right? Hold that down, and I'm just gonna pluck that on the end of three, bass, and of four. So on the end of four, I get out of that chord shape, I'm getting ready for A. So just bar across the um, four, three, and second strings, just as you would for an A bar chord, but we're just going to pluck strings four and three there. So what we have is, one more time, all right, then we hop into this um, kind of adjusted shuffle groove. It's kind of coming from this idea, but it does something a whole lot more interesting, and we're going to um, put some cool picking. Uh, in action here as well. We actually start out with just the bass here. This is over A, right? So we start out over A with our bass. And then on the end of one, pluck up with those same two fingers on strings four and three. And then for beat two, come up like you would in a shuffle and push through this, the fourth string uh, along with that bass in the fifth string, right? 
that's the F sharp. All right, so that's kind of you know where it's coming from. But what we're going to do is just push that, and then on the end of two, go back to our A uh, tones here with these two fingers before wrapping up with another repeat of that whole thing. What? I'm, I'm in the middle of a lesson. I can't I'm just stop. I gotta, I gotta keep going. Real quick, real quick. When are you gonna record an album? Yes, I know. I've been saying I'm gonna do that for a long time. I, it's one of those bucket list things. I really wanna do it, but I mean, there's the details are just crushing. Like there's the music, but then there's the like, how do you get it heard? How do you get it out there? And I'm just, I don't know. It's just not something I, I have the time to deal with right now. Haven't you heard of DistroKid? They do oh, that. Yeah. They make it easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Don't they? Don't they help you publish your uh, your music and get it out on streaming sites like the most popular ones? It doesn't cost a lot. Yes, either. that's definitely what I do. So, so that's actually the easy part. And actually, writing the music and recording it. That's that's going to be the uh -huh. hard part. Yeah, I figured. Uh -huh. All right, but let me get back to the lesson. All right. Okay. 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 And on the end of four there, uh, what happens in the intro is you'll pick that E right by itself and then transition back to this for the D7 or this way if you're going to play it without the thumb. All right, so we've got... the same for that additional measure that I played through there except on the end of one under this we play that open first string to give it that D9 vibe and really kind of flesh out the melody this doesn't happen uh, every time during the song but it, it does happen often so you'll either hear this part played uh, without that E on the end of one or with it in this case we've got it All right, and right here we're doing something really cool over A. Instead of doing this, you know, deal here, what we're going to do is uh, climb up strings three and two with some double stops. And we're doing it with a shuffle bass with the thumb. So the thumb is going to play one and two and three and four. And, and what's going to happen on top is one and two and three and four and, all right? together, which is really tricky for sure, but um, get that thumb going and try to add these on the end of two, and then on three, on four, and um, see if you can't get this going. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and forgot that last little uh, bass beat there. All right, once more. So you're just taking that shape and just kind of moving it from A into this little deal, which has got us a cool little E7 sound, but we got the bass in A, really cool. Walk that up chromatically one, and then again, which is where we started this whole thing, right? So it kind of gives us a nice little resolution into A. But we're not going to stay there long. We're not staying with this A long, what we're going to do from here is jump back to our uh, sort of main theme. And here, the only difference from what we've already done, of course, we're putting that E in, but we're ending on the end of four, not with this, but instead with the open fifth string here. All right. And we're going to do something pretty special in this next measure from here. We're going to make use of those double stops again on strings three and two. This time, kind of weird <laughs> to end with the open third and the open second. But when we put this in context, it is extremely interesting to me. So we're going to play with the bass here. Remember, we kind of stumbled into it by playing on the end of four. And then now, one and two. And on the end of two, this is also kind of kind of crazy, um, we're going to play a full chord. So we're going to accentuate that and of two, kind of in between the main beats. we got a little bit of syncopation uh, with this chord. And this is really an F sharp seven chord here. We've got three tones from it. We're kind of missing the fifth from it, but we've got them. Uh, we've got the 
first finger here taking care of the bass on the F sharp. Sec, uh, sixth string. Then we've got the flat seven, giving it that bluesy dominant seven sound, which is E, second fret, fourth string, and then the major third of this chord on the third fret, third string. All right, and I'm playing it this way. You could play it a number of different ways, but I'm able to grab this pretty quickly, and you've got to grab it pretty quickly because it's happening on the end of that two beat, right? So we've got one and two and one and two and and if you're really into thumb picking it can be kind of tricky to hit that bass with the chord on the and of two you know especially if you've got this steady bass thing kind of happening which is kind of established in this tune so far so you might have to really pay attention to sticking that chord with these three tones and then for b3 we are going to hit that bass kind of as expected, an and of three, and then we've got four and. And here's another instance where we're kind of anticipating the chord change, right? We're going from this F sharp seven chord to a B seven, right? This chord. So on the and of four, we're gonna pluck these two tones as we move ahead of B7 measure there. Once we're there, bass with the thumb on the fifth string, second fret, and then F sharp up on top, bass again. Then we're gonna hammer onto the, we're gonna transition really to E7 here. So we're gonna hammer from the open to the first, pluck the two outer strings, then D, on the second string, and then we're almost there. We're gonna pluck the second with the bass, and then back to this deal. And that cool little hammer on at the end of it. One, and two, and three, and hammer. One, and two, and three, and hammer. It only does that twice, but it's hard not to want to repeat that cool little groove. So a lot packed into that last section. Let's take a look at it played slowly. Hope you dig today's lesson. Be sure to check out our sponsor, DistroKid. There's a link in the description to give you a little bit of a perk if you're interested in checking out their platform and releasing some of your own music. And if you want to keep learning, check out this video that I've got over here for you, and I'll see you over there. Until then, practice smart and play on.